Greetings, family. Welcome to the Conspiracy to Erase a Nation segment. I wanted to just give you a heads up that this, again, will be an edited version of this lecture. The reason is I just use a few words that I would take out for the context of YouTube. But just to let you know what this exact lecture is on in totality, since I will be taking a part of the introduction out, is this lecture will be on what happens with the people who claim that they are the Hebrews, the people who we know today as the ish people, the people who are in the supposed land as we speak. Well, how did those people get to that land? How did they go from a religion that originated in Africa being the religion that is probably most associated with Palestine? So we're going to talk about that. And I just wanted to give you a heads up that it's going to be edited. But if you want to watch the full version without any edits, you can go to my Telegram. Link is in the description. Click the link. It will take you right to the application. Very easy to download. But with that, let's get started. Greetings, family. Welcome to the African Exodus show. I'm your host, Tony Cherie, here to you with a new video. This is the segment Conspiracy to Erase a Nation, dealing with the book that I wrote that is available on Amazon.com. Only $15.99 for the print, $9.99 for the Kindle version. And so we're going to talk about the next segment of this discussion of the true Yasharel. Yes, we're going to go into Palestine now. Last Last time we dealt with the Edomites, who they were, where they originated. They originated again inside of what would be modern day Sudan. So and then we also spoke about the fact that the Edomites eventually were, went into Arabia. And I used a number of scriptures to show that to you. So if you did not see that previous presentation, I think it's very helpful in order to understand this next leg of the presentation. So we're going to now we know that the Edomites did in fact go into Arabia. There was a group known as the Manaeans. These are people who originally were from a South Arabian kingdom called Maine. This kingdom was eclipsed by Saba, who many of you might associate with that region. And also they gradually would make their way north into the Levant and also into Palestine. So in Jordan, the Manaeans actually founded a city known as Man. Man obviously sounds like Timan. Timan, as we dealt with, is one of the original Cl clans that come from the Edomites. Now it's been opined that Man is actually the city that has been identified by different people of that region as Timon. Two people in particular, you have Eubisius of Caesarea and also the Catholic saint, Saint Jerome. So like many Arabians of that time, the Menaeans were very much into the spice trade and that is actually where they are noted to have entered into Palestine. It was Ptolemy, son of Ptolemy, who dated the Menaeans entering into Palestine to around 263 BCE when a trade of incense between between the Gerhanes and the Menaeans was in Syria, Palestine. From there, the Menaeans become associated with a new group known as the Nazarenes inside of Palestine. So Jerome, the Catholic saint, spoke about the Nazarenes. He said that until now, a heresy is to be found in all the synagogues of the East among the Jews. It is called of the Menaeans and is cursed by the Philistines until now. Usually they are called Nazarenes until today they blaspheme the Christian people in their synagogues under the name of Nazarenes. They cursed him, Hamashiach, three times a day in their synagogues under the name of Nazarenes. So this tells us right here that the Nazarenes, who were Menaeans, basically became associated as being Jewish Christians. How did that happen? So we're going to go through a number of other different beliefs that are all related. I know this is going to be a lot of information thrown at you. Please pause do a Google search if you need to take some more time to digest or just go back to the video in segments because we're going to be moving very quickly through a long swift of history. So we're talking, talking about the Sabians. The Sabians of Haran, this is a group that is known throughout the region, was known throughout the region. It has been referenced many times by different people in history, including a number of people inside of Islam have noted the Sabians of Haran. Now, something is very significant about the Sabians of Haran. While they were a polytheist group, 
and they are said to have originated in Haran and Turkey. Um, they also were known to be people of the book. So again, they worship the god Shemesh, the sun god. They worship Sin, the moon god. They worship Saturn. They worship J Jupiter. They worship Mars, Venus, and Mercury. But at the same time, they were identified or identified themselves as being people of the book, followers of Torah. In addition, some people have also noted that the Sabians seem to originate from a group of exiled Hebrews. Do I know if they were true Hebrews? I don't know. But a group that at least identified themselves as being exiled Hebrews who were inside of the Babylonian Empire under Nebuchadnezzar. And essentially, this group becomes exposed to Zoroastrianism, another religion that you should all know about. The reason you should know Zoroastrianism because you will see throughout Christianity and also Judaism a lot of the understandings that are common to people come from, not from the Torah, not from the Bible, but come from Zoroastrianism. So Zoroastrianism is a religion that was established by a Persian prophet. His name was Zoroaster. It was established between 1500 and also 1000 BCE. It is a monotheistic religion, okay? Although it's also dualistic and it has a lot of beliefs from astrology inside of it. So remember all of this different information, Zoroastrianism, remember the Sabians of Haran, remember the Nazarenes of the Menaeans. We're going to talk about another group that comes out of Palestine known as the Mandeans. So the Mandeans are very closely associated with the Sabians of Haran. They also regard Haran as being their celestial homeland. Coincidence, maybe. But they also established a very strong presence inside of Palestine, where they were known to be absorbed into Judaism and Jewish Christianity. So the interesting thing about the Mandaeans is that they also believed in one God, one Elohim. However, they did not believe in Yahuwah. So they also, interestingly enough, they also carried a number of beliefs from Zoroastrianism. So I'm reading from the Mandean Association Union, which summarizes their dualistic beliefs. The Mandean worldview is stamped by Gnostic dualism. A world of light and a world of darkness exist in mutual hostility. The world of light is a world of light and brilliance and goodness and truth and eternity without death. Hitting the world of light is a sublime being, the king of light, life, or high. Countless number of beings or angels surround this God. The world of darkness is a similar construction to the world of light, but it stems originally from the chaos of dark waters. The dark world is full of evil and falsehood. Hostile relations between light and darkness, life and death, good and evil have always existed. These relations led to the creation of the earthly world. Earth was created as a result of joint actions from darkness and light. Basically, it was an evil act with interference by the world of light to tilt the balance in its favor. Now, here's something that could also be possibly a coincidence. Maybe, maybe not. The Mandaeans also had a certain sect called the Nazarenes, and this was the sect that was basically practicers, practicers of Gnosticism. Again, to remind you, the Menaeans who came from Maine, came from uh, Arabia, also had a sect in Palestine known as the Nazarenes. Now let's talk about the Mandaean Nazarenes. Their Nazarenes is known to mean to keep. Again, they were keepers of Gnosticism, Gnos Gnosis. So according to the historian Epiphanius, inside of the Panorian of Epiphanius of Salamis, Book 1, Section 18, Nazarenes were Jews by nationality, originally from Gileadites, Bashanitis, and from the Transjordan. They acknowledged Moses and believed that he had received laws. Not this law, however, but some other. And so they were Jews who kept all the Jewish observances, but they would not offer sacrifice or eat meat. They considered it unlawful to eat meat or make sacrifices with it. They claimed that these books are fictions and that none of these customs were instituted by the fathers. This was the difference between the Nazarenes and the others. So again, let's go back to the similarities that we've seen. Menaeans have a Nazarene. They are Jewish Christians. Mandeans have a Nazarene. They identify themselves as Jewish practicers originally, right? Here's the very interesting thing. If you actually go through Mandean texts, it says that they originally worshipped 
the Elohim of the Bible or the Elohim of the Yahudim that they actually originally worshiped the same one as Judaism. According to the Mendeans, essentially the people who practice Judaism became corrupted by their teachings and they are the ones who are practicing their faith rightfully. So how does this all tie in and come together? Well, essentially what I lay out inside of the book Conspiracy to Erase a Nation is that Judaism originates from Mendeanism. You have people who are adherents to the Torah, brought the Torah from where it originates from in East Africa, and brought it into Palestine. From there, mixing it with a number of beliefs such as Zoroastrianism. This group, which branches off from the Mandaeans, become what we know today as Judaism. So what I'm going to show you next time that we do this segment is I'm going to show you a proof that not only did the Mandeans basically are they the original people who become Judaism, but they themselves recognize and agree that they are not the original Hebrews, but they were actually converts to the faith. So that will be next time. But thank you all for watching and y'all willing. I will see you in the next video.